you know, this video is to show how you quarter out an Oryx, how you process an Oryx, essentially unzipping the cape. Um, because these are smaller animals, we decided not to do a, a shoulder mount. Uh, we both decided to go with Euro mounts for the heads. So we didn't have to cape them out like you would normally do for a shoulder mount. Um, I'm not super skilled. I haven't done too many animals. So Aaron was pretty fast at field dressing these animals. This knife here was pretty, pretty rad. Uh, very little tissue damage and was able just to unzip the sections of the quarters and cut it down to this quarter. And we did side by side. So we're basically just quartering out the animal in the field. I think one regret is I left the tongue and the heart. And I usually recover the tongue and the heart, but I wasn't really processing information that well uh, during the processing of the animal just because, man, what, an, what a wild hunt. So there's a storm coming in as well, so we were you know, we we're trying to get the animals cleaned up before we, before the rain came, and I didn't think twice about cutting into the, into the uh, body cavity to get the heart. We weren't gutting the animal; we were just simply quartering it. He's skinning off what he can, and you know, you can see the fat and the connective tissue between the skin and the muscle. And um, we're simply skinning the animals down to the ankles, and quartering is removing. I mean, it's how it sounds. You're removing the actual quarters. So the hind quarters and the front quarters of the animal, that's where all the, 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 the desired meat is from. So the shoulders and the glutes, the hips, the thighs. And um, Aaron likes to use these removable blades uh, for skinning. They're like little razor blade sets. Uh, I forget the name of the manufacturer. I just ordered mine recently for deer season here in New Hampshire. Uh, but as the blades go dull, you can just swap them out. You don't have to worry about sharpening knives. And uh, it's a very cost effective and time effective way of cleaning animals without a whole lot of knife mess. So yeah, he's just removing the hide from this quarter. Once he gets down to the joint, he'll just simply remove the whole quarter. So he's getting ready to remove the whole quarter now. One thing, if people have never done this, is how easy it is to actually quarter and remove large amounts of flesh and limbs from, you know, the corpse of the animal. It kind of puts in perspective how fragile we are. Super robust, you know, almost 300 pound animal and you can just clean it up with a knife in a few minutes, so. Uh, he likes cotton bags. These are, um, yeah, just cotton game bags keep them off the ground, keep the dirt off of them. And we pretty much, he rested them on this bush. It, it never touched the ground. We basically laid it there. And then after we got some quarters, I hiked them back to the truck. Uh, so he's gonna do uh, other quarter and back strap. And people that don't know what back straps are, back strap is the, the muscle along the spine to the left and the right of the spine of the animal. And uh, the back strap is the most ideal. The back strap and the tenderloins are the two most ideal desired places of an animal like this, a large animal. Uh, we didn't do tenderloins. Tenderloins, you'd have to actually gut the animal, go inside the chest cavity up onto the inside of where the ribs meet the spine and remove the adjacent, uh, you know, remove the, it's essentially the, the back strap inside the, the, the body cavity. Um, so we were just field dressing these animals. So we did not go for the tenderloins. We didn't go for organs. We did not go for uh, anything but quarters and straps. Aaron is exposing the back strap along the spine. You can see that they have a really big hump on their back. And so he's chasing that, that tissue that covers the strap. So he's uh, revealing the back strap. Some people might Notice he didn't go all the way on the strap. Uh, these animals have a lot of silver skin and sinew that meet at the front and back of the straps, so he cuts them a little bit short. Silver skin is that really iridescent skin that you see right on top of that muscle mass. 
Uh, that has to be removed before cooking. What happens with silver skin is it shrinks when you cook and it'll it'll turn the entire back strap into a curled piece of meat and it becomes very tough after cooking. So you want to remove silver skin from your meat. Uh, from the hams and the shoulders and, and whatnot, I spend a lot of time um, grinding my meat. So I have an axis in my fridge. I have this, this Oryx and I grind my meat. I like grinding up uh, a hamburger or a kufta or, um, and I enjoy that. He's saying the sections, how he likes to cut the back strap up and in what portion sizes when he likes to cook it and how he likes to cook it. He's just removing the strap from how it's connected. And this is obviously the most desired piece of the animal. Um, the rest of the animal, I, again, I grind it up, mix it with an egg, some panko, some herbs, salt, pepper, and a fat. Uh, I like to use granulated organic beef fat, 25% ratio to the ground meat that I do. And I make burgers or kufta, or I'll add onions and garlic and make a tzatziki, and it comes out really nice. Um, so how would I describe oryx meat? Someone asked. It's like turkey and beef made a baby. It's a mild, it's a mild meat. It's, it's good. I, I think axis tastes better than oryx. Um, but the oryx is very tender and it's not gamey at all. I just, I just personally feel like grilled uh, axis kind of has more of like a the meat flavor that you're looking for, whereas the Oryx meat's a little bit more mild. But I feel real good after eating Oryx meat. Aaron's removing the second strap from this animal. Uh, you know, you guys might ask, do we have to, in, a, in some states like New Hampshire, you have to recover the entire body of the deer and you can't just dispose of it. You know, you can't just leave it and, and quarter it out and leave it in the woods. You're supposed to actually remove the animal, get it weighed, whatnot. Um, you don't do that in New Mexico. You don't have to bring this animal to a way station. You you leave the corpse, what's left of it. So you're just going to leave the body cavity on site. Um, there's wolves in New Mexico. There's coyotes. There's bobcats. There's vultures. This, this corpse, uh, the remains of this animal will disappear in a matter of hours and what will be left is just bone and skin and fur. So nothing is wasted. Um, you know, obviously it would be nice to bring the whole animal, have it completely processed, but you know, you just don't have that luxury when you're out in the middle of the desert. And uh, time is of the essence, you know, we want to get these on ice as much as, as soon as possible. Luckily, the day that we shot our animals, it went overcast and the temperature kind of dropped to about 75 degrees when all week it had been, you know, high 90s at this point. So it was nice to catch a little bit of break from the sun. So Aaron's deboning it. He's just feeling with the tip of the knife, the bone versus the meat and peeling it back and making small slices at a time. Uh, you can see the meat after the blood has drained from the meat a little bit sitting in the coolers. Uh, it starts to turn almost like a ground turkey color. Uh, I do note I do notice when you cook ground oryx, it kind of stays that ground turkey color. It's not as red or uh, dark as like a beef uh, or a venison. So again, it's it's a fairly mild meat. I, I have been enjoying brining the oryx. It keeps a lot of the moisture in, especially after you mix it with fat. Um, the burgers are unbelievable. I do like them as burgers. I'm not crazy about them as other things other than burgers, but they're a very tender, soft burger that holds, uh, melds with the fat really well when it's on the grill. Um, he, he cuts off what he would normally just cut off of it, but you know, he shoots oryx all year long. Uh, you know, he gets oryxes, he gets, you know, he's got, you know, plenty of this sitting in a freezer over the years. So he cuts off what he believes. And then we would kind of post-process our own legs. You know, we would go a little bit further. Since, since I'm making ground meat out of this, I took a lot of the tender meat closer to the bone off the bone. And, uh, you know, cause I'm just gonna stick all those smaller pieces in a meat grinder anyway. There's a lot of silver skin on these quarters. 
And uh, one thing I did, that's another reason why I like to grind is I don't have to do the prettiest silver skin cleaning job. Uh, my meat grinder kind of pulls a lot of the connective tissue and silver skin and kind of separates it from the from the actual meat itself. So I, I, I don't really have a problem with it. And we're just bagging it into smaller, more manageable meat bags. Um, ideally, I would have liked to vacuum packed everything on site, but we didn't have a vacuum packer with us on this trip. Aaron is removing the face off the skull. You want to get as much meat off the skull as possible because we are we did bring these to a taxidermist for euro mounting. Uh, euro mounting a skull is essentially boiling it or using beetles. Uh, the more fresh the tissue, the better for beetles. And if it's rotten and whatnot, then you you would want to boil it in borax. The teeth would fall out. You got to remove the horns because the horns will dissolve in borax. So you want to uh, remove the horns. And the way they do it is I think they stick an instrument up there and kind of remove some of the con connective, I don't want to call it tissue, but the material between the actual bone of the horn and the, the, the sheath of the horn that you see. Um, once that's removed, you know, they can boil the whole skull. And then during the post-processing of the skull, they would reattach the, the teeth and the horns with glue. Um, when we recovered the animal, the tongue got stuck in the dirt. And that's why I didn't take the tongue. I wish uh, probably could have washed it off real carefully and kept it, but it was kind of too late. We left it out overnight, so <laughs> lost the tongue, which is a big bummer. I do like organ meat when it comes to uh, like liver. I would love to learn how to process an entire animal down to the organs, like cleaning out the stomach and actually making tripe, that kind of deal, that would be awesome. But eye removal is a miserable experience and very difficult. Everything just wants to move on the blade. Uh, those are the eyeballs that have 12 power vision, huge eyeballs. So this is obviously the part of the cleaning of the animal that is less important to feeding yourself, but you know, a memory of the hunt. What an, ext what, a, what an amazing beast at the end of the day that has been thriving in New Mexico since the 60s. This is a $150 tag for New Mexico residents. And for the, uh, for the price tag for residents, man, I, I don't see why you wouldn't shoot one of these animals. You know, you can shoot a, a 500 pounder once, a 400 pounder once a year, if you have the access to the properties. And that's a lot of food to put on the table for 150 bucks. So that's personally, I, if I lived local in New Mexico, I'd hunt these every single year. So it's important to learn this. You know, I, I, I helped process my axis. I helped process this animal. And uh, every one of these larger game species animals that I help process is just, you know, another opportunity for that experience for processing the food, processing everything. And, um, you know, it also helps with the understanding of the, the biology of the animal. So when I do go to cook it, I can recognize the cuts of meat. I can recognize what I'm looking at and uh, you know how I want to post-process and cook uh, 